Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for July 6, 2022, around 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Not too much to talk about today, but we will have to talk about some more potential tropical development later into the month of July and then what to expect for the remainder of the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wild look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that it is actually relatively quiet across the basin today, which is certainly some good news. We have some shower and thunderstorm activity, mainly out here across the deep tropics, tropical wave coming through, but otherwise not really much. Another tropical wave out here in the East Pacific Basin. This is posing no concern to Mexico over the next several days. And overall, it's pretty quiet right now. So in the East Pacific, we still have Category 2 Hurricane Bonnie. Again, Bonnie uh, kind of did become a major hurricane for a brief period of time yesterday before weakening. It is now a Category 2 hurricane. We also have a new system down here to the south and east of Bonnie that will become a tropical system over the next couple of days as it generally progresses westward across the tropical Atlantic. In the Atlantic Basin, all is quiet at this point. No other development is expected over the next five days, so that is certainly some good news. Real quick look here at Hurricane Bonnie. Again, pretty solid hurricane still today. Sustained winds of 105 miles per hour. Notice though, we have some pretty cool, dry, stable air over here towards the west of the storm. And this is heading into that environment. So over the next couple of days, expect a gradual weakening trend as Bonnie encounters more unfavorable environments. Still maybe some, some swells and really rough surf conditions across portions of coastal Mexico over here. But other than that, no impacts expected at this time. So looking at the overall sea surface temperature anomaly map, this was updated as of yesterday, July 5th. We noticed that, again, like we were talking about yesterday, we are still firmly within a La Nina. We have had some warming of the equatorial Pacific out in this region through here. You can kind of see some of these warmer than normal anomalies showing up. This is really just very temporary. It's not sustained, and this will go back to being cooler than normal. It is actually very possible that we end up in a fourth year La Nina at this point. There are some indications in the models that pretty strong easterly wind burst will continue uh, through the next several months, and it is entirely possible that we go into next year in a uh, strong La, monitor strong La Nina pattern. That's very rare territory. Uh, certainly has not happened over the last several years. Uh, so that's certainly something interesting. And then in the Atlantic Basin, all else is pretty remaining equal right now. We have warming out here in the deep tropics, cooling in the subtropical Atlantic, and that's generally allowing for what will be a very busy 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. Now, if we look at something that, you know, people may not understand here, this is really just looking at the overall 500 millibar geopotential heights here. And so we're really looking at about 18,000 feet in the atmosphere. And this is August, September uh, of 2020 and 2021. So we're going to be looking at a little bit of a comparison here. But basically, this shows that we have some very strong ridging, very strong high pressure that's up here across the North Atlantic high seas in uh, uh, 2020 and 2021. And what this has allowed is for storms to make more of an impact on land over the last couple of years. Now, if we look at what the overall forecast is this year, this is off the European forecast. Again, same 500 millibar heights here. We notice that again, we have those pretty warm uh, kind of colors here. This indicates that we have some pretty strong ridging aloft and a pretty strong amplified high pressure area kind of over the Northeast US. And that's certainly uh, something that would have to be monitored because this definitely steers storms closer to land. And again, everybody lives over in these areas. And so that's certainly something to kind of keep in mind. And then when you look at this here, this is the surface mean sea level pressure anomalies. This is valid um, all the way out into September. And what you can actually see here is that we have higher pressures out here in the subtropics and southwest Atlantic, but lower than normal pressures out here across portions of, you know, Texas and down here in the Bay of Campeche. Now, what this actually goes to suggest and maybe kind of indicate to me, at least kind of a little bit, is that we actually have 
lower pressures out here and potential for more tropical cyclones to be in this area. That's not necessarily a guarantee, but that is one inference that we can take away from this forecast. Again, it's not a set in stone deal. And obviously, you know, individual storms will go wherever the environment allows them to. Uh, but generally speaking, lower than normal pressures out here maybe suggest a higher focus of tropical cyclones in this region. Now, what's exactly coming down the pipeline? Well, to this, we'll look at the GFS forecast. This is the GFS ensembles. So all of different members of the GFS forecast, this is the 12Z run here, valid for 8 a.m. this morning. And what we're gonna look at here is we're really going to look at this area in the world right over here. And the reason why is because over the next couple of days to about the next week or two, we'll have lower than normal pressures out across this region. And what this basically is telling me is that we will have lower pressure and more potential for tropical cyclones to spin up down here. Now, as we've been talking about for the last two days now, tropical cyclones like to form on the tail end of dying cold fronts. And what we have is a lot of fronts that are moving southward into the southwest Atlantic and Gulf. They stall out because they are now no longer supported by the cooler air to the north. They stall out after being modified by the warm tropical air mass. And you typically are left with some decaying energy that tries to spin off into a tropical cyclone. And we've seen it, I mean, you know, multiple times. But these shorter lived systems are hard to predict. They are hard to forecast because there's so many variables, but lower the pressures down here across the Southwest Atlantic and Gulf lead me to believe that there is at least somewhat of an increased risk for tropical cyclone development in this area sometime in early July here. This goes to about July 12th and that continues all the way to about the 15th of July. And then look at the end of the forecast run. We start to have lower than normal pressures out here across the deep tropics for a, a brief period of time. And that might be when our next shot for potential tropical development will occur. If you look at the European ensembles as well, the European ensembles from zero Z kind of indicate much of the same thing. Again, we have pretty strong areas of low pressure, lower than normal pressure out here in the Southwest Atlantic. And then if you look here at the end of the forecast run, we start to have an increased low pressure region down here. So with that being said, there's definitely some increased potential for tropical cyclone formation over the next couple of weeks, one in the Southwest Atlantic, and then towards the end of July into August, we'll be focusing then on the deep tropics and the main development region. All right. So that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. And there will be no video tomorrow, so don't be expecting a video tomorrow, but I will have a shorter video on the track of Tropical Storm Colin that will be released sometime tomorrow afternoon. All right, so that being said, have a good rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I will talk to you more on Friday.